Welcome, everyone. Today, we'll be chatting with the Inter-American Development Bank and their open source education initiatives on GitHub. To start, how does the Inter-American Development Bank use open source to create impact? Thank you so much, Cynthia. So um, my name is Julia. I lead Code for Development at their Inter-American Development Bank, which is uh, the bank's open source initiative. We work to improve lives in Latin America and the Caribbean, being through financial and technical support for the 26 countries in the region, uh, working on reducing poverty and inequality, um, helping to improve health and education um, and infrastructure, so basically, our aim is to achieve development in a sustainable and climate-friendly way. My name is Tony vasquez Brust. I am an urban data science consultant. Urban Pi, in particular, is an open source tool that was designed to help Latin American and Caribbean countries plan more sustainable urban growth. Urban Pi applies geospatial data analysis, open source collaboration, even a little bit of machine learning and it helps create insights that can help reshape the way that we plan urban environments. In particular, uh, Urban Pi was built to help governments in the region during the COVID-19 pandemic to plan the distribution of healthcare services. The tool allows us to measure accessibility to essential services in any city. That is exactly where in our cities people live too far away from places like schools, hospitals, public transportation stations and so on. And a really cool thing about the tool is it doesn't need any specific data to do this. It automatically downloads geographic boundaries, road networks. It can estimate local population, local distribution, locate places of interest, and of course, even calculate travel times through the local street system to then measure accessibility, how far away people live from essential services. Our hope is that having access to a tool such as Urban Pi, our governments will be able to identify suitable locations for new schools, for example, or to expand schools based on actual data and of population needs and their accessibility. So now they can, they can use something like this to have a complete image of their territory and help doing spatial planning. Amazing, thank you. What is the culture of open source within governments and the public sector in Latin America? The ITB was the first development uh, bank and international institution to create a repository for open source tools focusing on government. Back in 2017, the bank was creating a lot of digital products for our clients and we always saw them as a digital public good and we needed to make sure that all governments um, in Latin America and the Caribbean, but also all governments in general would have access to the tools that we were creating for our clients. And, and now we are in 2023, we have almost 200 um, open source tools that are very strategic for governments, uh, not only created by the IDP, but general open source tools that can be used by governments. How does Urban Pi support accessibility analysis on the ground? Our goal here is to make sure Urban Pi uh, is able to support more and more spatial planning projects. We want to make easier for local governments to design and execute policies based on data. Um, being, you know, planning schools, being from the education sector, being health, being access to financial services, being food security, looking at access to um, healthy food, gyms, recreation and space, whatever government wants to guarantee accessibility to. So Urban Pi is, a, is those kind of transversal tools that can be used for a lot of different things with a common goal of guaranteeing accessibility and helping policymakers to design policy based on data. From the get-go, when we, we were helping municipal governments plan the distribution of health services, health help, tests, and all of that that was super important during the pandemic. We knew that we were doing something that is known in, in the literature as uh, accessibility analysis. We were trying to find out where the larger amount of people live far away from services, especially vulnerable people. And we knew that this is, has a health-related aspect, but it's also important 
when you think about public transport, access to banking, access to education, access to green spaces, open, open spaces. So all of these scripts that we were writing to help gather the data and make the analysis, we realized that if we could somehow pack all of these into reusable libraries and service agnostic in the sense that those could be used to measure accessibility to education, transport, or any other essential service, it will help other governments use this tool for their planning, no matter this, this specific need. And education is one of the big ones, of course, access to, to schools. How does the Interamerican Development Bank prioritize education policy through open source? Hello, Cynthia. I'm uh, João Cossi, uh, RDB's Education Specialist in Brazil. Education is a fundamental pillar for development, and we believe that leveraging EdTech and open source solutions like UrbanPy can greatly contribute to effective uh, school planning. This tool, the, uh, the analysis capability, will help us to prioritize locations based on actual needs. Uh, make our decision much more evidence-based and efficient. It will be a game changer for uh, school planning efforts, not only for the IDB, but also for education departments across the country. To test the uh, eff effect of this uh, tool, we are piloting this with two governments, with our two nearest operations, the state of Pará and the municipality of Florianópolis. What is the impact of using Urban Pie to understand the state of Pará and the needs of the community there. And Pará is, 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 has a completely different context. It is located in the Amazon, uh, and the density of population there is, is really low. So planning there would require like planning for less students. And as it happens in most of IDB's loan operations, these two operations, they uh, have more than 50% of their amount. Um, focused on school uh, infrastructure expansion and, and uh, improvements. So the urban pie solution here would have the potential of not only to optimize this, uh, the, the resource allocation for more than 50% of the loan operation, but also to help uh, minimize citizens' commuting times and improve school enrollment. Thank you. How did this project come to life through GitHub's Skillspace volunteering program. Thanks so much, Cynthia. We started by uh, creating um, these spatial models using open source data sets for school locations as well as population demographics for uh, a, a relatively small scale city, Florianopolis in Brazil. And then we scaled up our analysis to the entire state of Pará. Here's what our kind of interactive map looks like where you can zoom in and out on different parts of the city. This is an example of the type of model and predictions you can get right out of the box with the Urban Pi software. The data come from OpenStreetMap, including school locations, including demographics, and this is just the out of the box functionality of Urban Pi. Now, I want to say that for the finalized version of this that we'll continue working on, we're going to be using official data provided by the Brazilian government and it's amazing that the Brazilian government makes these data sets open, publicly available. That lets us kind of step in, use the Urban Pi open source software, incorporate all of these data and make maps and predictions that are tailored for different cities in Brazil, different states in Brazil. And without those data, we just couldn't have as, as high quality a map as we want to be able to share and show with y'all. How do we ensure that this project is sustainable and can be shared out to help others moving forward? Well, that's something we do have in mind, sustainability, and especially how to make it possible for the, the same people to run the same analysis in the future or to be run in other places. So I think that it's mostly a matter of uh, developing really easy to use interfaces, writing really good documentation, <laughs> and having really good examples to make easier for, for future uh, analysts to reproduce our results and use our code and our methodology for their own use. Especially if, if we intend this to be used by local governments that not always have a specialized data analytics team in-house. In so having people with only a little bit of um, technical experience being able to use these tools and read the examples and modify what they need to modify to, to use it for their own data, that's going to be key. Uh, and we are making an effort. We are making sure that we are 
we are producing this documentation and these easy to use interfaces. We have two main reasons to open source this tool. The first one is to lower as much as possible barriers for, to adoption, especially thinking into account that in our region, IT budgets are not necessarily large. So having a tool that's potent, that can do what, what cities need and has no fees, has no cost, has no licenses, it's very, very uh, appealing to our, our audience. And the, the other reason we wanted to make it open source is because we, we, we would like to have a community forming around our tools in which enthusiasts, volunteers, um, city officials, the IDB, other agencies can collaborate and, and uh, rest assured that everything is going to be public, nobody's going to own it. That provides an incentive to actually collaborate and use the tool and, and that in turn makes it, makes it easier for other governments or other planning teams to use the tool in the future because they have more examples to base their, their use case on, for example, and have people that can ask when they are in need of help. That's also very important for us. Thank you so much to the Inter-American Development Bank and the GitHub Skills and Volunteering Project team for your time. Visit the Urban Pi repo on GitHub to learn more and contribute directly to Urban Pi along with the Inter-American Development Bank.